Hey everyone, so just want to go over some features of our 109 Sport Sunray that's for sale. 2021 year model. Uh, my wife and I have had it for just about a year and have uh, taken it out west once. Um, it's got about 6,000 miles on it. Uh, we've done a substantial amount of upgrades to it that I uh, want to show off to you guys so you understand uh, what you're getting for your money. So basically, the first thing we've done is from the factory, all of the propane uh, lines and your electrical lines do not come protected on the underbody. Uh, so what I did, uh, because in case you didn't know, rodents and squirrels like to chew through propane lines, um, and we had a squirrel the first day we brought it home chew through one of our gas lines. Got the line fixed, and then I put a conduit, aluminum conduit, over top of all of the propane and gas lines. Also, all your electrical cables are now protected, and I put electrical conduit underneath that on the, on the underbody. Um, something else that we've done is on the roof rack here, I had installed an aluminum crossbar that goes uh, across the side here, um, so you don't have to worry about rust. And we installed a shower curtain. So your shower curtain is very rapid, easy to deploy, also very easy and convenient to put up. Um, we got a couple videos and photos of that for you. And then also max tracks. So these max tracks are just conveniently mounted here so you can get to them rapidly. Um, some standard features about the camper down here in this utility cabinet is a little shelf that I installed. Um, this can be easily removed as you uh, seem or deem fit. Purpose of that just to keep wet hoses down here, dry stuff up top. You'll notice a small uh, hole that was cut right here. The purpose for that is this is where your furnace is behind this panel. And so uh, we never had this happen to us, but we read online where some people had a furnace fault or trip. And so in the middle of the night when it's cold and you're out camping, instead of having to pull everything out of that compartment, get a drill, undrill that side panel, you know, when it's cold late at night, all you have to do is reach in and there's a little switch to reset the furnace. So all you do is you reach in and press that switch, you're good to go. Right here, right here is the shower. So hot, cold water, hose pulls out, extends all the way up top where you can hook it into the top of the shower curtain and be enclosed for your shower. Packs back easily. And then here, one of the other uh, major upgrades that we've done is installed a solar generator, the Blue Eddy EB70. Uh, so what that allows you to do is have a 110 power off grid without having to use a gas generator or anything like that. So uh, we'll show you that here in just a second on the inside. But basically, what because of that, what I've installed is MC4 cables right here and then this would be now your new shore power plug. So if you're at a campground or you're at home and you want your batteries to charge, you can plug this in and be on shore power and have unlimited amount of power, obviously. But then here are your MC4 connectors to where you can easily plug in your solar panel and run it with up to a 40 foot extension cable away from your camper. So your camper can be in the shade, your panels can be out in the sun, and you don't have to worry about having a window open or something of that nature to get the cables to the Blue Eddy. Everything's been neatly routed on the inside, um, which we'll show you that momentarily. So here, standard features. Uh, this is your fresh water tank, 10 gallons that you fill up uh, for when you want to boondock or overland. Uh, cable hookup for a TV uh, wiring that you can install. Uh, we never utilize that feature. Uh, and this is your city water connection for at a campground. Um, to have unlimited water that you would hook in direct to your plumbing. This is your hot water heater. This is where you can access uh, your hot water heater features. Uh, a fuse right here that uh, we had blow once on us in the year that we've used it. Um, easily replaced. Uh, I have lots of extra fuses that come with the camper. Um, so that's where you would replace that. This is also where you would purge the system and drain it for winterizing. Down here, another big upgrade on your plumbing is one thing that people don't realize is when you are filling 
your freshwater tank uh, to boondock, um, it can burp back out of the intake that you're filling up and it can make it annoying and slow to fill up water. And then especially if you're off grid with say five gallon jerry cans and you're trying to fill it up, you know, you don't want to waste any water burping back out. So what this is, is a rapid, or excuse me, a quick access to your overflow valve. So you simply turn this and then now the overflow valve that runs up to the tank is right here and it's a simple quarter turn. Instead, before this was here, you had to crawl under and actually unscrew a uh, stopper, uh, which obviously was annoying because you had to crawl under the camper every time to fill the tank. And if you know the ground's dirty or wet, you're getting uh, dirty or wet. So that's another feature installed. Um, just makes it a whole lot more convenient and easy when you're filling up water. So coming to the back here, We've done some large upgrades to the kitchen area. So we put a stick on subway tile backsplash that has then been caulked and sealed to the countertop. So when you're in here in a tight space, washing and doing the dishes, you don't have to worry about, you know, spilling a little bit of water and it getting onto this uh, press board that's behind it. Um, installed a magnetic uh, utility rack for your knives, uh, things like that. Uh, so when you're at camp, just makes it a lot easier to hook things up. Also installed the little hooks here for whatever other spoon accessories you desire. Um, command hooks for cutting boards or whatever you can imagine, as well as a paper towel roll in the upper cabinetry, um, which is very easy and convenient, and it keeps it out of the way down here from whenever you're utilizing the kitchen. You have your water pump to turn on, uh, your water pump for off-grid use, and then your Dometic uh, hot water heater. This is where you turn that on, hot water for the whole system, sink and shower. Also, large cabinet down here for additional storage. And then your microwave. Uh, we actually, while we use the camper, we remove the microwave and use this space as a coffee nook. Uh, you're obviously free to do whatever you want with it, but we just found for us the space was more valuable as a uh, coffee nook. So this microwave uh, has been used maybe once by us. Basically brand new. Uh, your refrigerator. Um, this is a propane and electric fridge. So when you're uh, at a spot with electricity or a campsite and you are plugged into shore power, uh, it can use electricity. And then whenever you're off grid, you know, 90% of the time it's gonna use propane. Uh, you simply go here, turn it on, and switch between gas and propane uh, as needed. The fridge has a good amount of space, more than enough space in here for enough food for two people for a good four or five days. Also a little tiny freezer ice box. Moving right along to the outside. Um, outside speakers, um, obviously the out, output of your air conditioner and then more 110 outlets that will work either uh, at a campsite where you have shore power or with the Blue Eddy that we've installed. This step here is a uh, retractable step. You can get that out of the way while you're driving. Slides out really easily at camp. Door is a solid slash screen door combination. And then now we will go over some of the features of the Blue Eddy. So here, guys, is the Blue Eddy uh, EB70. Great little uh, inverter combo. It's got 700 watt hours of capacity, and then it has a 700 watt inverter. So it will, believe it or not, power this air conditioning unit um, off grid. Uh, disclaimer that it'll only run it for roughly two to three hours, depending on how um, often the compressor kicks on and off. But hot summer night in the woods, you can cool your camper off uh, before you go to bed. Uh, everything 12 volt wise, it'll power, um, you know, for uh, multiple days, uh, you know, cell phones, tablets, your lights, uh, your max uh, air vent fan, all that stuff, it powers great. 
Uh, so what we've done is instead of your 30 amp cord that you would normally pull out from the outside of the camper that we talked about earlier. So if you're at a campsite with shore power and you want to use shore power, you would simply plug a normal drop cord into the electrical source into the spot on the outside of the camper as shown. And then on the inside, all you do is you come in here, you take this drop cord, unplug the camper from the Blue Ready, plug these together, now you're on shore power. It takes this out of the system and all of your electrical in the camper is now run off of the uh, shore power. Uh, know that no actual electrical rewiring was done by myself. Everything is still stock. If you wanted to return the camper to its uh, original form or factory form, you would simply just need to unscrew the panel underneath the bed here and remove the drop cords that I've put in place and reroute the main shore power cord outside that outlet. So very easy to uh, revert if for some reason you find that you're not gonna utilize a inverter system. The great thing about this is uh, we found this to be perfect for uh, weekend trips and several day trips, but if you are someone who's gonna be in this for ex very extended trips, uh, multiple weeks at a time or something like that, you can easily you know, switch this to any uh, inverter uh, system you want, whether that's a Jackery, a Blue Eddy, a Goal Zero, you know, whatever capacity you desire, you just have to figure out if you're gonna then fit it in that cubby or place it on the floor. Also, those MPPT connections for your solar panel, um, that cable gets routed right here. Um, so, as you can see, if you're away from camp hiking for the day, you can keep your system locked away don't have to worry about anybody stealing it and uh, uh, your camper still weather tight while you're gone. Also installed is just a convenient uh, little uh, mesh net here to keep whatever accessories you have at night. This right here, there's an actual stud in this wall where if you want to install a TV, you're more than welcome to. And your corresponding connections here to get the audio from your TV coming through the internal speakers and the external speakers if you want. Your controls for that are all over here along with the light switch. Uh, only other few things that we've done is installed various command hooks in different locations uh, for ease of accessorizing. So guys, just re going over the solar system that we've set up for our campers, I want to show it to you real quick. Uh, with the Blue Eddy EB70, we also have the uh, Blue Eddy 200 plus watt solar panel. We have an extension cable that we purchased to go with it. So with this and the cable that comes out of the panel, you get roughly 40 feet of extension from the camper to place it as needed. I'll go ahead and set that up real quick for you guys and just kind of show you how easy it is. Simply connect all your MC4 connections. And that's it, you're done. Now you get up to 200 watts of solar going into your Blue Eddy on the inside. Um, something I want to talk about too, uh, this camper is sold as advertised as solar ready. Let me show you what that means and how that's really not a true statement. So what they mean by that is this port down here. This is a small port where you can get uh, various solar panels that will hook into this. And then what you would have to do is these cables right here that are not even hooked up, you'd have to put ring connectors on them and then connect them to your deep cycle uh, 12 volt battery. So yes, it's solar, semi-solar ready and that you can buy a panel if you would like to charge this battery. But remember, this is only going to power the 12 volt appliances in your camper, your lights and the USB plug and your max airframe. That's about it. To be able to use the air conditioner, any 110 outlet, 
the microwave, all that stuff requires an inverter or shore power, and that's what the Blue Eddy does. So with the system we've installed, you really have a backup. You have the Blue Eddy, and then if you are unfortunate to have multiple days of no sunlight, um, or you just happen to, for some reason, use a ton of power, uh, you can easily uh, switch over to this 12 volt battery, um, and you're good to go. I just wanna go over all the accessories that we are including with, with the camper. Uh, all the additions here, as you see, the Blue Eddy EV70, the 200 watt solar panel, um, the extension MC4 connection, 40 feet uh, long to go with it, a steel cable and master lock that you can use the lock to connect it to one of the grommets on the solar panel, and then take the cable and go back to the frame of the camper or a tree or whatever you prefer to just kind of prevent thieves of opportunity uh, because it is a pretty pricey panel that you're leaving out in the open whenever you go hiking. A water hose, expandable water hose for if you're at a campsite with uh, traditional water, you can hook that into your city water connection. And also with that, a water filter, the pressure reducer, because you never want to directly put uh, non-pressure reduced water into your camper because uh, it's not rated for the same type of plumbing that's in normal homes and you could potentially cause a leak. So I always want to use a pressure reducer. Um, and then an adapter for your filter for the expandable hose. Um, for boondocking, this is just a, another guard hose that is to be used as a drain hose. So that you would simply screw right here which uh, is the drain outlet for the sink on the inside. And you would run that hose anywhere. So we also have with accessories here, just a little included funnel. This will allow you to uh, more easily fill up the fresh water tank when you're off grid, um, instead of trying to have a whole jerry can into that little tiny port on the side of the camper. Uh, also included are all your 12 volt fuses for the 12 volt fuse box on the inside. So if you had the misfortune to blow anything, you're covered, as well as, these special fuses that are specifically for the hot water heater in case that fuse blows. You have a way to fix that. Also included is a clean waste porta potty toilet that expands with legs. Um, it's great little uh, bags basically that if you've never used one before, uh, you simply open. They have basically kitty litter on the inside um, and it's just a very clean, uh, easy way to use the restroom out in the wilderness and uh, pack out your own waste uh, and not have to worry about digging a cat hole. And lastly guys, included in the accessories is just a, uh, basically a dog food tote with a seal. That way for all of your trash, you can conveniently put, whether it's the waste bags from the toilet or other camp trash in here and have it nice and sealed where you don't have to worry about smelling it or attracting any critters from Go over the locks and security systems that we're including with the camper. Um, simply a cable to secure your tire and your propane tank to the camper, uh, an actual hitch lock, and then a hitch pin lock here as well, as well as another lock to tie up your chains. Um, so those are all the locking accessories we're including. We're also including two wheel shocks to go with the camper.